Hey, Kelly. Hey, Eric. How's it going? It's going. What's uh, what's happening? Well, I'm really excited to say that, you know what? I think I found the house I want. No I just, way. I just don't know all the ins and outs. And what is this really going to cost me? I'm kind of freaking out right now. So you want to know the costs of buying a house? Yeah. What are the costs associated if, you know, I've got my offer in. Now what? Here, why don't you finish your tea and let me go over the steps with you. I appreciate that. Thank you. What's up, everyone? This is Eric Yip and... Kelly Whedon. And today, we're going to talk about all the costs associated with buying a home. And if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. This way you won't miss out on any future videos as well as we've had so many people calling us and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking of buying a home or you need insurance or anything like that, make sure you reach out to us and we look forward to meeting you. Hey everyone, thanks for plugging in. This is Eric and I'm Kelly. We're here to show you and help you when you're buying your home. So these are going to be the costs associated with buying a home. You betcha. Eric, take her away. Sounds good. I'm going to take it away. I'm back. Anyways, you're, you're done. Okay. Anyways, so when you're buying your first home, typically you need to know about the cost. And one of the most important things is you need a down payment. <laughs> you betcha. So what's a down payment? Down payment is basically... What's a down payment? It's down payment. Down payment isn't like, what kind of like question is down, that? Down. I know. It's basically uh, money that typically you have saved up and you need to put it down for the payment. Okay, so it's like, <laughs> so it's like locking in, you're gonna buy the house, you're serious about buying the house and you have to have an amount of money. Like what kind of an amount of money? Like how much? Like, Five dollars, ten bucks, ten thousand. We call it a, like a capital. Is that a good term for it? Um, so typically, the amount you're going to buy a house, there's a percentage of what they call a down payment is the amount of money that you're putting down to lock in a mortgage to say you can afford it. That's a pretty good description. I like that. So, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what a down payment is. Exactly. If so, not, Google it. Yeah, Google it. And let us know. Exactly. Anyways, so when you buy your first home, the minimum you need to put is usually 5% on a home. What that translates to is, let's say you're buying a property for 100000 you need to come up with $5,000. Easy if, math. Easy math. If you're buying a property for 200000 you need to come up with 10000 and if you're buying a property for let's say 400,000, you need to come up with $20,000. Wow, okay. Oh, wow, and, wow. Oh, don't forget that wow. the banks actually want to see that you have another 1.5% for your closing cost. So that is you, closing cost. You don't know what a closing cost? Oh, oh well, of course I do, you do. Well, I know, <laughs> you do, but you know, well, that's why you're asking. <laughs> so your closing cost, will include everything from your moving expenses, okay. your lawyer's fees, and your potential inspection, if you choose to do one, okay? Now, the 1.5%, the, the banks don't necessarily need you to use all of it because your lawyer fees, your moving expenses, and what was the third thing again? Appraisal. No. No. No, it wasn't. Your Legal fees. Legal fees, moving expenses, home and home inspection, they can all vary, right? Okay. So, for example, your lawyer fees typically, I'm going to say, can range you anywhere from, on average, I've seen about, let's say, $650 plus wow. disbursements, all the way up to, I've seen as high as 300 no, sorry, I beg your pardon, it's $3,500 plus disbursements. Wow. Yes. Wow. I know. Wow. 
Wow! There is no right or wrong. Every lore just charges differently and depends on who you want to go with. Personally, I don't know if I'd use price as a benchmark, uh, but price does come into factor in my opinion. So uh, what else is important with the lore's fees? Oh yeah, your disbursements. So typically your disbursements will be um, a title search, uh, the title transfer from the previous owner of their name. Now after you purchase the property, it's going to be in your name. Uh, your name. White out and crossing off their name and then writing in your name. Just you have kidding. to pay for that. <laughs> you do. <laughs> they actually take it to the land titles and they actually make sure that you are the new rightful owner of the property. That's important. You want to it put is. your name on that. Of course. And of course, uh, with the disbursements, it also include transferring of the funds from your lawyer's trust account to the seller's trust account so they can oh, okay. now give you the keys. And... Hmm, what else is there? Yeah, that's, that pretty much covers it, okay? The other thing is uh, home inspection. Typically, your home inspection, depending on whether you buy a smaller home to a large... Oh, you know what? I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Going back to the lawyer's fees, one thing I forgot mm -hmm. to mention was, did you know that if you are buying a property all cash, the lawyers typically will charge you a little bit less because there's less paperwork. Whereas wow. if you actually have a mortgage, the fees go a little bit higher. Also, according to your mortgage amount, the higher the mortgage amount, the higher the fees also, typically. Did you know that? No, I did not. You do now. So, yes. The other thing is now, okay, fast forward uh, to, I was talking about what? The inspection, right? The inspection. Of course. So typically your inspection will cost, I'm going to say, on average, between $350 uh, to all the way up to, I've seen, about $1,500, wow. okay? And every inspector charges a little bit different, or inspection okay. company, they charge a little bit different, depending on the package you want. So, uh, on average, I'm going to say, you're, you're typically spending about $450 as an average. So what's that inspection actually doing? So, the inspection is basically an audit on your home. Okay. The inspector will come in. It, it's actually, it's not like on TV, okay? It's not like the, the shows. Like they Sherlock can, Holmes. Yeah, or they, they can't pry open the, the walls or uh, what else? Or, or take apart your air conditioner. Um, their job is to look at your home. Uh, the exterior, the interior, and uh, and it, it's not so much a, a fail or pass um, audit. It's more about, hey, look, here are the things that the inspector has observed, and there might be things that uh, you need to take care of, or, you know, just keep in mind that everything has a lifespan. So, for example, your roof or your shingles, usually on average you have maybe a 25 or 20 year lifespan okay. and if they can start sitting that it might start curling uh, that the shingles start curling you might need a new roof so just something to keep in mind okay okay uh, what else is there we talked about the lawyers the inspector what was the third thing yet? oh moving expenses moving moving uh, oh that's a big big pain but necessary there's also a big range also because you can physically, the cost of that could be some pizza, some mm -hmm. beer, and some buddies that have lots of trucks, or maybe a U-Haul. And that might cost you whatever. I don't maybe know. A couple hundred. A couple hundred bucks. Up to 500, depending on how big the truck you need. Or how, how, how far you're driving. <laughs> or I, I was actually gonna say, how many cans of beer and pizza. I wasn't thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Two, if you actually move uh, into province or you're moving out of the country or if you have a lot of stuff and furniture, like if you have like 20 TVs or maybe you have, I don't know, 20 TVs antiques. too many. Or antiques. Oh, yes, antiques. Of course. Of course. Uh, and typically to, what, what's the cost for uh, a moving company these days? 
Um, I'm gonna say what, 2,500 to maybe 4,500, depending on how how much you have. Right? Yeah. And, and they, they, don't they charge you by the weight? Well, sometimes they'll charge. I know uh, some companies will charge two people for two hours, and it's seventy dollars an hour. Right. Right. So if you have a large home and that takes six hours, and that's moving and unloading or packing and unloading, mm -hmm. that's I think it breaks. It can, yeah, absolutely. Kelly, did you know? Oh, by the way, how much of a down payment were you going to put on the home that you're going to buy? Say five percent. Five percent. Okay. So, if you put any less than twenty percent, okay, you need to pay for the default insurance. Do you know what that is? No. What's that? Okay. So most people hear uh, CMHC. Okay. And basically, they are the default insurer. There's actually three of them. There's CMHC, there is Genworth. However, I believe they recently changed their name. I'm not sure what they're called right now. Okay. But we'll stick with the old Genworth. And the third one is Canada Guarantee. So what that means is, let's say you have your approval from your lender. Mm. However, Yay! the default insurance won't give you the insurance. Guess what? You're not buying that house. You need to make sure that you qualify for both. Very, very important. And so one way of getting around the default insurance is if you skip it, well, if, as long as you have 20% or more, okay. you don't need to worry about that. Okay. However, most people, if you have less than 20%, so let's say 5%, okay? okay. Uh, you need to pay a premium of 4%. And what the lenders do is they actually roll that 4% into your mortgage amount. Okay, so you're actually paying a little bit more versus if you're paying uh, 20%. And if you now put 10%, okay, you need uh, the insurance premium goes a little bit lower at 3.1%. And if you can actually come up with 15% or a little bit more, uh, you are now paying 2.8%. A lot of people actually don't know this, uh, and I think it's something that you need to be aware of also. Okay, so that means if I default on my mortgage or I'm riskier and I look like I maybe can't pay my mortgage payments, yep. that's ensuring me that I'll pay the mortgage. Not that you're paying the mortgage, but the insurance the mortgage yeah. would be paid yep, to you got it. the financial institution. You got it. So Perfect. it strictly benefits them. Well, what the heck? I know. Okay. Well, put 20% down. The next thing is you need to pay for your property taxes. Taxes? More taxes? <gasps> Don't you love taxes? Don't you love the, the carbon tax? Don't you love the carbon tax? No. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you still gotta pay it. Okay? okay. So basically your property taxes, it's the land tax for your property. Uh, typically, the more expensive your home, and depending on the area, the range can be, I'm gonna say, let's say 1,500, all the way up to 10,000 or more a year. Okay. OMG. So you need to account for that. Two ways of paying your property taxes is uh, you can pay it monthly or you can pay it yearly. Another way of doing it is some lenders roll your taxes into their payment. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? What, what, what are your thoughts on it? I personally would pay it separately because if you're wrapping it in with your mortgage payments, mm -hmm. then you'd be paying interest on that and it'd be less going to your principal. Mm-hmm. No kidding. I know one payment is sometimes easier than two. Yes. But at least separating it, you know, what's going to your principal, which means how much of your mortgage is being paid down. That yep. would be more important. Yep. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, uh, aside from property taxes, there's also property insurance. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> more? Well, that's not taxes. That's just insurance. Okay. Uh, and that's basically... Would you call it a fire insurance on the home property? Basically, basically that's kind of what it is, right? Protecting uh, your home if there's a fire, so there'd be re replacement costs. Yeah. Um, if sewer backs up or something, it was the city's fault because there was a blockage and it 
wrecks your basement, your insurance would actually go in and replace uh, your basement, rebuild it, whatever, to however it was before, and all you do is pay a deductible. That's right. That's awesome. Yes, you got it. And typically that will range, I'm going to say between, on average, $700 to $1,200 annually that I've seen, and of course, in uh, depending on where you live, uh, there might be a lot of places that are privatized where you can actually shop around, and that's where the, the difference is. Some provinces, uh, they're not privatized where everything is, would you say, governments? Uh, regulated. Regulated, yeah. And this way, everything, you don't need to shop around. It's just one standard price, and that's it. So, you know, which way would you rather go? Regulated would be better. Okay, fair enough. But at the same time, having privatized, you get to pick and choose. You can shop around and find some lower ones. Yeah. But what happens when things are like that, people who make a lot of claims, bunches would move to the next company, make a bunch of claims, next company, next company, and then that's why some companies, all of a sudden, their prices skyrocket. And that's kind of what's happening right now in Alberta. Oh, yeah. You know, did you know that we pay a lot of taxes here? No, not taxes. I think, well, we, we pay that. We pay a lot. But insurance... Our insurance is high here, not just properties, but vehicle insurance, because apparently Albertans are speed demons, or racers, race car drivers, something like that. So. <laughs> oh, the other thing is, there's utility cost. OMG. Yes. Well, don't you want to... If, you're, if it's cold outside, you want to heat your oh, yeah. Don't it's you? cold out right now. Right? Turn up the heat. Here's the other thing. You got to remember that sometimes if a... If, imagine all the utilities have been turned off. What you need to do, what you need to do is now you got to pay for the hookup cost. Uh, I know. The dreaded hookup cost. And a lot of times it can range anywhere from $25 uh, all the way up to $50 depending on the type of utilities uh, you want. So you got gas, yes, electricity, correct, your cable, yes, your internet, yep, water and sewer, water and, and sewer, garbage disposal. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it adds up. Everything adds up. Here's a bonus one. Did you know that sometimes you need to pay for your appraisal? What's an appraisal? Well, basically... I thought that was for antiques. Well, no. They, they appraise homes, too. The banks want to make sure that the price that you're paying on the home is actually market value. Imagine the home is, let's say, in the area for the typical home that you're buying is worth $450,000. Okay. okay. But, for whatever reason, the seller wanted to sell the home for $750,000, and you're paying $750,000. Now, if that doesn't align with the market value of the home, well, guess what? The bank's not going to, or the lender's not going to give you the loan. So that's why a lot of times the banks, it, I'm going to say it's, it's it's a little bit for your protection. Yeah, it sometimes. like a safety feature. That like a safety net. You're not, you I hate to say, getting screwed over and buying a home because yep. someone emotionally wants to sell it for more than yep. really what it's worth. Yep, you betcha. So you don't, you just don't want to overpay for it. Okay. Uh, it's okay to underpay though. Underpay. No, overpay. Underpay. Okay. Uh, and that was a bonus. That was the exactly. Uh, awesome, Eric. Thank you so much for all the great information. You know, for more videos, please subscribe. Check out the link below. Smash it. Pound it. But new features coming up is what are the hidden costs? Did you know that there are hidden costs when buying a house? Wait and stay tuned. Check out our next video.